Welcome to Accounting with Madam Mombi. Today, we are going to look at cash flow statements, or rather statements of cash flow. So to begin with, we can look at what is a cash flow statement. So as the name suggests, a cash flow statement is a statement that is prepared according to International Financial Reporting Standards requirement, specifically International Accounting Standard number seven, where it shows, it provides information about the cash inflows and the cash outflows with, in an entity within a specified time period, usually we are near. So simply a cash flow, it is the flow of cash either inside the organization inflow or outside from the organization outflow. So within the organization, within a specified period of time, why is it important to prepare a statement of cash flow? Uh, cash is an asset that is required by an organization uh, and it is a current asset. So we need to know whether the organization has enough cash to meet short-term obligations as and when they fall due. You need also to know the ability of the organization to generate positive cash flows within a specified time period we also want to know what is the difference between the accounting profit. The accounting profit is what we go at when we prepare the trading profit and loss account, or rather when we prepare the income statement. The profit we get, the net profit, it is different from the cash in the organization, and we need to reconcile the net income and the cash from operations in an organization. Therefore, we have to prepare a statement of cash flow. It is also important to see whether there is cash to pay dividends. So we want to evaluate the ability of the organization to meet short-term obligations and also to pay dividends. We also want to see which activities did the organization undertake in form of investing activities and financing activities and how much cash was used or how much cash was generated from these financing and investing activities. So basically, it is a requirement for an organization to prepare a statement of cash flow for the above reasons. Now, in uh, preparing a cash flow statement, we are going to be classifying cash flows according to various three activities. The first form of activities is operating activities. So we are going to look at what is the cash flow from the operating activities. We're also going to look at what is the cash flow from the investing activities. And finally, what is the cash flow from the financing activities? So allow me to first of all discuss each one of them individually. So starting with the operating activities. When you talk about operating activities, as the name suggests, they are basically the activities of the day-to-day -day running of the organization. They are the daily activities, the daily operations, the major line of business of that business. So activities in the major line of business of an organization, if it is in the service industry, the major line of business is provision of services. If it is a um, and uh, selling or dealing with goods, the major line of business is purchasing of goods and selling of goods. So we are talking about operating activities to mean that it is the cash generated from the firm's major line of business. It includes cash receipts from the sale of goods or rendering of services. This is the major activity of every organization. So how much cash did you receive from sales? How much cash did you receive from rendering of services? It also includes cash payments to suppliers for goods and services. While this one is an inflow, it is cash receipts. Cash payments is an outflow. How much money have you paid to people outside the organization for the supplies that they have supplied you with? That is the normal operations of a business. It is also cash payment to and on behalf of employees. How much has been paid to employees as wages? That is also an operating cash flow. So 
These activities either would generate cash inward an inflow or, do, or they would also reflect an outflow. Now, when you're looking at a statement of a financial position or a balance sheet, the activities that are reflected as operating activities, they majorly affect the current assets. You remember the definition of the current assets? They include the trade receivables, the trade payables, accruals, prepayments, sorry, sorry, not accruals, but um, prepayments, and they also affect the current liabilities, that is the accruals, uh, bank overdraft, and so on. So what you are saying is that the activities from operating activities, when you're going to be looking at the indirect format, we are going to be majorly focusing on the current assets and current liabilities to identify the operating activities. The other form of activities is the cash flow from investing activities. Again, as the name suggests, investing. A firm may invest either in non-current assets or what you call fixed assets. That is the plant, property, and equipment. A major category of non-current assets. And when I say investing activities, you have to think about the inflow and the outflow. Money goes outside the organization and outflow when you purchase non-current assets. Money comes inside the organization and inflow when you sell non-current assets. So for the cash flow, there is an inflow when you sell the asset. There is also an outflow when you purchase the non-current assets. And the same happens for intangible assets. Uh, and the same also happens for investments. So when you talk about investing activities, we are going to majorly focus on non-current assets, how much we have invested in fixed assets. We are also going to look at other intangible assets. At the same time, we are going to look at investment accounts and how much we have gotten from our investments. So an organization may decide to invest in a loan by issuing loan to other people. And this has to be very clear that when an organization is issuing a loan to another organization, they are investing in the other organization because they are giving money to another organization, expecting to receive some interest from that organization. When an organization again buys shares of another organization, so this organization which is buying shares is investing in another company. So they are also going to be receiving dividend. So why I'm explaining this is because there is a conflict between some investing activities and financing activities, as we are going to see later in a question. And one has to know that, is it the business that has invested in form of buying loan stock of another organization? Are they also the ones who have uh, invested by buying shares of another organization. Therefore, they are the recipient of the investment income. They are receiving discount received. They are receiving uh, interest. In that case, these are going to fall under investing activities. That is why we have talked here about investment and the reported uh, investment income as shall be seen in the statement of income. Now, the final category is the cash flows from financing activities. Again, as the word suggests, every business requires cash to launch and sustain the business. So an organization through the board of management has to decide how are they going to raise the money that they so much desire to have so that they can finance their activities. So an organization, if it is a public trading company, they may decide to issue shares to the public. They can invite members of the public to buy their shares. When they invite members of the public to buy their shares, the organization is going to receive money, and those members of the public who have bought the shares are going to become shareholders. By issuing of the shares to the public, inviting members of the public to buy their shares, they are trying to get money for financing activities. So the inflow shall be the proceeds that shall be received from issuing of shares. 
and the outflow is going to be the dividend that is going to be paid the dividend that is going to be paid to those shareholders so here there is an inflow when we get some proceeds from issuing shares there is also an outflow when we pay dividends again at the same time an organization may decide to finance the business by borrowing so they may borrow in form of debenture loans they may borrow from other banks and financial institutions as a way of financing the business so here when they borrow there is an inflow of money to the organization because there is the proceeds from the loan borrowed or the cash from the loan borrowed that is the inflow at the same time there is going to be an outflow because they are going to repay the loan that is an outflow they are also going to repay the interest on the loan which is also an outflow so in this case you are going to be evaluating the financed by section of the balance sheet majorly we are going to be looking at equity and liabilities so these ones affect the equity and the liabilities in the balance sheet or in the statement of financial position that is where we are going to find the financing activities so having said so we can look at the format the format we are going to use is the indirect format so for the indirect format i would like first of all to clarify to you that when we are projecting or when we are preparing a cash flow statement we want to see exactly why is there a difference between the cash and the profit so we are trying to reconcile the net profit we got which should represent the excess money that uh, we got after paying off for our operations and we want to reconcile that with the real cash that is in the organization so we are going to start by identifying the cash from operations by first of all getting the net profit before tax so our starting point is going to be the net profit before tax once we have the net profit we are going to make the adjustments for items that have been included when you are determining the net profit but do not involve a cash movement let me explain this one of the expenses that we usually subtract when you are getting the net profit is one of the expenses is depreciation but as much as depreciation is an expense there is no money that the organization pays to anybody called depreciation in short depreciation is not a cash movement it is an expense but it does not represent movement of cash from the organization to a party outside the organization so as much as it is an expense it, it is not a cash flow so if we had subtracted depreciation when we arrived at the net profit which we always do then we are going to add back that depreciation to the net profit because it does not represent a cash flow we are also going to do the same for amortization of intangible assets amortization of intangible assets is the same as depreciation only that amortization is used for intangible assets at the same time we are also going to make adjustment for the items included in the uh, profit determinations that are not operating activities for example we can start with the gain on uh, asset disposal when we dispose any asset and at a gain remember that we are very quick to go to the trading profit loss and count and say other incomes and one of the incomes is gain on disposal of assets but we are saying that this one again is not a cash movement and it is not an operating activity so if it had been added to the net profit we are going to be subtracting that is why it is placed here in bracket because the gain on the asset was added to get the net profit and now we want to subtract it from the net profit for the loss on disposal which again we may have expensed we are going now to be adding it back so if it was subtracted from the net profit in the income statement for us we are going to add it back for the investment income again it was already added there in the trading profit and loss account as another income we are not saying it is not a cash flow it is a cash flow but if we are going to place it under the right category because investment income we are adding it i mean we are subtracting it then we are going to come and place it later as you can see under investing activities that is why it is going to come under investing activities 
The same with the interest expense and other provisions. The interest that had been subtracted as an expense in the income statement, we are adding it back so that we can come and reclassify it later into financing activities. So the last two are just a matter of reclassification. We are going to put them in the right class, either under financing or investing activities. Once we do that, then we are going to start with the cash flows from operating activities. And as I said, they are going to be affecting current assets and current liabilities other than cash. Simply, what you are going to be looking at is whether there is an increase or a decrease in each of the trade, I mean in each of the current assets and current liabilities other than cash. So I will explain this in a question on how you determine whether it's an increase or a decrease. And again, you are going to know the, whether to subtract. What is written in bracket, if it is an increase, you subtract. If it is a decrease, you add. This is what is for, uh, shown on the format there. Uh, as either bracket meaning you are subtracting or positive. So we are going to see about that. So the next one, you are going to pay for the taxes after that, which again after that we are going to come to cash flows from investing activities as we have discussed them. Investing activities majorly affect investments and uh, non current assets or fixed assets. Then finally we are going to go to cash flows from finance, financing activities which basically again are uh, represented by the financed by section which is shareholders equity and also the liabilities, the fixed or the long-term liabilities. So once we have done that, we are going to get the net changes uh, to cash and cash equivalent. We are going to earn the cash at the beginning of the year and our answer shall be the cash at the end of the year. So this is the format, it may not make much sense, but once we have a question, we are going to be able to evaluate that. So let us dig into our question. So we can see in our question that the assets uh, from 2015, we have the equipment at cost. The equipment have increased from 22,000 to 37,000. And we agreed that equipment fall under the category of non-current assets and it is an investing activity. So there, there is an investing activity. It seems that the organization purchased more assets or purchased more equipment. And the purchase of the equipment is going to be the difference between 22,000 and 37,000 because it is increasing from 2015 to 2016. Again, you have the accumulated depreciation on the equipment. So the depreciation is uh, changing from 11,000 to 17,000, the total depreciation of the asset. That means in the year 2016, there was a depreciation charge, which was expensed, which is the difference again between 17,000 and 11,000, which is 6,000. And that depreciation was the one that we are going to account for that 6,000, which is the difference there. For the cash, uh, 13,000 shall be the cash at the beginning of the year 2016. Remember, we are preparing a cash flow statement for 2016. So the column here represented as the end of 2015. Definitely, the end of 2015 shall be the beginning of 2016. So the amount that was closing 2015 shall be the opening balance for 2016. So that is why I'm saying it shall be the cash at the beginning of the year 2016. That is 13,000. And then the cash at the end of 2016 is going to be 22,000. And those are the ones that we are going to be reconciling in the cash flow statement. Then we have receivables. The receivables are increasing from 88,000 to 106,000. Receivables is a current asset and therefore it shall be representing in the operating activities. So we are going to be seeing that there is an increase in receivables and it is going to be an operating activity. Again, we can just think of it as um, receivables basically are uh, result from sales. When you sell on credit to customers, from the activity of selling to your customers, 
That is how those who have not paid are called receivables. So sales is a normal operating activity of the business. It's a major line of business activity. Therefore, that is why the changes in receivables shall be under operating activities. Then we can look at equity and liabilities. The share capital has increased from 80,000 to 100,000. That means that during the, uh, during the year, the organization issued to shareholders more share capital. They issued shares to some members of the public and received 820,000, which is the difference. And the shares that were issued, that is a financing activity. As we said that financing activities are going to be focusing on this area of uh, equity and liabilities, majorly on equity and long-term liabilities. For the retained earnings, this is the reserve where it shows how much money was left after all activities were catered for. And we can see that the change in reserve is from 17,000 to 28,000, a difference of 11,000. But this one does not represent a cash movement. When you increase a reserve, the reserve is within your organization. So it is the money that is in excess you're placing in a reserve. So the reserve does not represent a cash movement. In this case, the retained earnings does not represent a cash movement because there was no inflow or outflow. And we can see that the difference of 11,000 is the money that remained after they have paid for the dividends. How do I know that? Reading the last statement, here it says that debt profit was 34,000 for the period, was reported, and the dividend of shillings 23,000 were paid. So if you subtract 34,000, the net profit, you subtract 23,000 of dividend that was paid, you're going to be left with 11,000 of retained earnings. So the money that was not distributed to shareholders, the money that remained from the profit after issuing dividends, the money that remained shall be 11,000. And that 11,000 is what is causing the retained earnings to increase from 17,000 to 28,000 because of the money that was retained. And we are saying there, there is no cash flow at all. Finally, you have the payables. The payables are moving from 15,000 to 20,000. And payables are creditors. These are people we owe money. They are suppliers that we have not paid. So the amount that is due from our supply, due to our suppliers has increased. So again, when you talk about suppliers or payables, we have to know that this is our operating activity. It is because we purchased goods from suppliers on credit and did not pay. That is why there is an increase in the payables. So with that in mind, then you can be able to know that the increase in payables is an operating activity. With all that now, we can prepare a cash flow statement with all that information. And we are going to start with the net profit here that we are given as uh, 34,000. So we can prepare a statement of cash flow. This organization was called Bright, Bright Limited. And the statement of cash uh, of cash flow for the year for the year ended 2016. So it is uh, for the year ended 2016. 31st December 2016. We can also put there 31st December 2016. So that is it. That is a cash flow statement for that period. We are going to have two columns. We're going to have there two columns. And we have said we are going to start with the net profit. Net profit before tax. Before tax. In our case, there was no tax. We were just told the net profit. The net profit was 34,000. And that information was given as the last additional information in our question. And we have said that the first thing we are going to do is to make adjustments for non-cash items, items that do not represent a cash flow. And in our case, the only item that does not represent a cash flow 
that was already subtracted before arriving at the net profit is the depreciation for the year. So we are going to be adding back that depreciation that must have been subtracted as an expense, yet it is not a cash flow. And that depreciation is the charge for the year. For the year 2016. And now, how much is the depreciation charge for the year 2016? Looking at our question, looking at our question, we are saying that the accumulated depreciation has increased. At the beginning of the year, the accumulated depreciation was 11,000. At the end of the year, the accumulated depreciation is 17,000. Meaning during 2016, there was a depreciation charge of the difference, which is 6,000. And that depreciation was subtracted in the trading profit and loss account to get the uh, profit we have of 34,000. And we are adding it back because it does not represent a cash flow. So we are adding back a depreciation of 6,000. As we have seen there, the difference between uh, the accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the year and at the end of the year. From there, we are going to go to cash flows from operating activities. And we have seen that the operating activities affect majorly current assets and current liabilities. In our question, they were affecting the trade receivables and the trade payables. So from our question again, we can come here and see that the trade receivables have increased. The receivables are increasing. They're increasing from 88,000 to 106,000, a difference of 18,000. So there is an increase in receivables. We can also look at the pay payables so that once we do, we do both of them. The payables are also increasing. The payables are increasing from 15,000 to 20,000. So there is an increase in payables of 5,000. So both of those are going to be presented here as our operating activities. We are saying there is an increase in receivables. And we have seen that the increase is of 18,000. 18,000. There is also an increase in payables. An increase in payables. Or 5,000. Now, our major predicament at this point is whether to subtract or to add. Or rather, does it represent a cash inflow or a cash outflow? Now, the increase in receivables means that the, we have continued to sell to people some goods on credit. And those customers have not paid us. So this one is an outflow there's going to be subtracted. So again, there's an increase in payables. The people or the suppliers, we have continued buying from them on credit without paying. So we are withholding the money. The money is with us. We have not paid to the suppliers, but we have continued buying. So the money is in the, in the organization, so we are going to be adding. So this one is withheld, the money is out for the other one, but indirectly, in terms of cash flow. So this one, one is uh, you less an increase in receivables. You do the opposite for payables. So you less, then you add. So the net effect, we can call it the net, net cash from operating, net cash from operating activities. The two of them, you can, one is negative, one is positive. The net effect is negative because the negative is more. We are going to have that the net effect is negative 13,000. That is the net cash from operating activities. Then we can go to cash flows from cash flows from investing activities. Investing activities. The investing activities, we say they affect investments and non-current assets or fixed assets. So in our question, 
there was only one activity there was only one activity under that category that is the non current assets the non current assets at cost increased from 12000 to 37000 an increase again there of 15000 and we are saying if you see assets increasing it means we bought more assets so that one is going to be a purchase of assets the assets have increased meaning that we purchased some assets and that is our investment for the year so here we only have you less cash spent on purchase of equipment we have seen there there was equipment that were purchased and because there are not other many others where we have to put so many we only know that is the only one that we have seen that the assets increased and when the assets increased it means the cash decreased so there was money spent to purchase the equipment then we are going to have cash flows from financing financing activities so our financing activities we can see them again in our question we have seen that our financing activities are reflect, reflected here in the share capital the share capital is increasing meaning we have issued shares so there was money that we received from issuing shares specifically 20,000 the retained earnings I have explained why they have increased they have increased by the money that remained after paying dividends so our cash flows are only two of them there was a cash inflow from issuing of shares and there was a cash outflow because some dividends of 23,000 were paid so there are two activities in this financing activities uh, in this category so we are saying here that our was proceeds you add proceeds from issuing of shares issuing of shares we have seen that the shares increased by 20,000 meaning we should some shares and then that is an inflow then there is an outflow because there was payment of dividend cash that was spent on payment of dividend payment of dividend you have been told in additional information that there was payment of dividend of 23,000 that is an outflow so the net effect or the net changes from financing activities shall be negative also negative 3,000 so once you have that all the three categories then you are going to calculate all these and the answer you get is called the net changes net changes in cash and cash equivalent and cash equivalent and the net changes in cash and cash equivalents is going to be 9000 from all these calculation from the top 34 plus 6 minus all these and this shows how ch there was changes in cash in the organization which we are going to add the cash at the beginning of the year cash at the beginning of the year when I say beginning of the year it is the beginning of the year 2016 the cash at the beginning of the year was 13,000 and automatically when you add the answer you get is cash at the end of the year which is 22,000 which is the cash at the end of the year we can say cash and cash equivalent at the end of the year and this is the answer we had from our question already the answer was there we are just going to show how we are arriving at it you can see here that the cash at the beginning of the year was 13,000 and the cash at the end of the year was 22,000 so that is how you prepare a cash flow statement uh, a simple cash flow statement and that shall form part one of this uh, topic but uh, watch out for part two where I'll be covering another question with maybe more entries. If you have liked or learned, kindly like, share and subscribe. Thank you.